Hello everyone, so we're back again for a PHP podcast, Singapore PHP podcast number two. And uh, we have with us our a new guest for today, we have Hazrul. Hey. And uh, we also have Zion, who is one of the co organizers of PHP user group, and uh, myself, Michael. So, hello. So, we're here again, and we're going to talk a bit about PHP. So, uh, so for the topics that were submitted so far, we've got something quite interesting, and we're going to talk a little bit about that. So first up, let's talk about uh, PSR. PSR two is to be deprecated and replaced by PSR twelve. Uh, tell us a bit more about PSR two, Zion. Okay, uh, so PSR two is mainly of uh, like coding style, like how do you uh, do it in them spaces or do it in them tabs? Uh, where do your curly braces go? So the main uh, goal of this PSR two. PHP standards recommendation is basically to reduce cognitive friction so that when you review each other's code, right, when you look at other people's uh, PHP code, right, you won't vomit blood. So uh, <laughs> say, oh, consistency, um, it's like when you're reviewing someone's uh, essay, you don't need to waste time uh, uh, searching for uh, getting hung out over grammatical errors, yeah, things like that. So um, PSL2 has been around for quite a long time. Uh, so most editors and probably frameworks and projects, uh, when they do code linting, they will check against uh, PSR1 and PSR2. So a uh, simple one would be where do your braces go to for class. So normally the opening brace will go on the next line. But for, for, for control statements like if statements, the opening brace goes on the same line as the if, if, uh, if statement. So PSL 12 is basically just a minor, okay, not really minor. So it's a update to PSL 2 because a lot of things have uh, come by, uh, especially the uh, with PHP 7. So for a summary, if anyone's interested, uh, we can look at the PSL 12 meta document. Mm, okay, there you go. So uh, all the way at the bottom, we will show you uh, what are the differences between uh, PSR oh. 2 and PSR 12 and also uh, what are the votes. Uh, so actually all the things that go into a PSR actually will go through voting. Oh, yeah. Okay. So the people who voted for the uh, what to go in, what not to go in, uh, yes, compound spaces, for yes. example. So we have different framework, uh, framework developers, uh, mm. the E framework. Uh, Drupal, Easy, Falcon, you know, quite a name of you. Silver Stripe, oh my god, I didn't know Silver Stripe was still around. Okay, yeah. Zen, uh, this was we changed to something else now. Uh, Laminas. Laminas, yeah. yeah. Well, we, talk about that, we talked about that in the last podcast, so go check it out and you can, you can find out more about what that means. Uh, then, uh, and then non, non general, non representative voters, what are these? So just now the one was a bit of the major uh, 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 major changes. This one will be more of the other changes. Uh. I see. Okay, cool. So what it means for developers is that it's just a data linter. So basically you when you code, when your code editor is set up with the uh, effective lin this linter, so you basically helps to reset or re reject your uh, uh, formatting to make it more consistent. Uh. So I guess if you have that set up in, in PHP Storm, when you save or when whatever, you already you actually just do curly braces, right? You tell me just curly braces, and already you cut some curly, like typo error and whatever, or something. Yes, like that correct. To tell you that. So I think mm -hmm. I think they're still updating for PHP Storm because uh, you just deprecated. I'm not quite sure whether it's ready. Mm -hmm. So um. Uh, for example, uh, for a uh, context on the complexity of the new uh, new things I supported, if you look at the main document. Uh -huh. I mean, okay, let's go to the extended document. So I think uh, you scroll a bit down, uh, mm -hmm. they will show an example of uh, all the rules. Oh, okay, so, okay. Um, yeah, you see there's a use function uh, vendor package, then this uh, funny use vendor slash package slash curly brace blah 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 right yeah so <laughs> PSR 12 uh, kind of uh, update tells you uh, explicitly uh, why it's supposed to be the new uh, guideline for this I see mm. I see so, so this is more of like how you can update your linters and essentially yeah. you you hopefully get a bit more consistent coding uh, st style across the board so whoever look, reads your code would say oh okay I understand it uh, looks more consistent uh, especially if you are OCD 
some yes. of the people are like, oh, <laughs> must be spaces, not tabs. I kind of think, yeah, okay, those things. Okay, cool. So that's the first uh, story we have. So let's go on to the next story. The second story we have so far is, let's talk about rating yourself, uh, in rating oneself in PHP or a framework. So when when you are asked in an interview to rate yourself in a programming language or framework, what answer will you, you give and based on what criteria? This is actually based off uh, Zion's uh, blog post, right? Okay. So how do you rate yourself? So actually, uh, so answer the question about uh, 5 over 10 for PHP. Uh, so the, uh, the background story is actually what happened was I was sitting down in the, uh, I was interviewing someone recently uh, together with some other colleagues. So uh, the, um, the interviewee was asked uh, some basic questions about Laravel framework. So uh, things like migration, how would you migrate, uh, things about the ORM. So he couldn't really answer. So never mind. Later on, the uh, one of my colleagues asked, uh, so can you just rate yourself in uh, Laravel uh, from a scale of 1 to 10? So the interviewee uh, rated himself 9 upon 10. So, uh, okay, uh, it's a bit overrated. <laughs> so, um, so that, but that got me thinking, um, uh, is there any objective set of criteria uh, that I can use for myself or someone else uh, to actually uh, rate myself for a programming language? Uh, it can be PHP or uh, some other language like JavaScript or a framework. So actually, I came up with uh, 10 criteria. So for each criteria, uh, you can rate, you can score zero points, half a point or the maximum of one point. Mm. So to get 10 upon 10, you need to score the maximum of one point for each criteria. Mm. Uh, so I just briefly go through the 10 criteria. Okay. Uh, so the first criterion, you have designed and written an application. Fair enough, right? <laughs> uh, agree, agree. But full, you only get a full one point if you have done it from scratch and all by yourself. <laughs> now, uh, this is very important because uh, like uh, going back to the interviewee, right? Uh, he has done a Laravel project before, but he actually went in halfway. He didn't design uh, the whole flow. Uh, he just went in halfway, everything was already set up for him with it. So is that helping for a, a small component? So that means actually you don't, need, you don't know about how to configure PHP or the application. Oh, okay. So for each criteria, I actually gave uh, three examples in three contexts. One is in the context of the language, which is PHP. Another one is the in the context of a framework, in this case Laravel, and using maths as a context for a subject. So in this case, uh, for this criterion one, for PHP, the example would be you did a responsive website. Okay, fair enough. For Laravel, you wrote a REST API. For maths, um, you have designed exam papers, you have factoring, factored in questions, testing knowledge, <laughs> comprehension and application. So if you can design an exam paper, let's say for your students or something like, that means yes, you have, um, you can, you are good in maths. Uh, you can write maths application. So that's for the first criterion. Okay. Uh, second criterion is you know of the standards and the best practices used for the language or the framework. Ooh, okay, okay, so you only get a full one point if you also know, if you can also explain the design patterns used. So for the examples, for PHP is uh, you know about PSR. Uh, for Laravel, you know that the eloquent ORM, that means the uh, ORM used for the database, it uses the active record design pattern. Then for maths, maths you, you can say the Bobman's rule or you can say uh, you understand the POIA's four principles of problem solving. Uh, so this is what my university maths lecturer always tell me. Uh, this a famous maths guy. La. You can use these four principles to solve any problem. Understand, plan, do and check. And this is, uh, they also teach this in uh, primary schools and secondary schools also. So this is one thing you know about the standards and the best practices. Uh, criterion 3, testing. Uh, the interviewee that I was uh, interviewing was actually from uh, not local, uh, okay. from a nearby uh, one of our neighboring countries. Um, so they operate more like a software agency. Uh, the his current workplace. Mm -hmm. So actually, they just do whatever the client wants. Uh, so uh, 
the 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 boss don't give them any much leeway to like do testing or mm. things like that. So uh, she didn't know much about testing. Mm. Okay, so for one point is only if you know the various type of tests, what's a fake mod stuff, how to automate, and you have done it. <laughs> you have done it. Uh, okay. So PHP means okay, you know PHP unit. Level <laughs> level has this uh, testing framework called Dusk. Level Dusk. Okay. okay. Um, and Max, Max, uh, how do I know that you know how to do testing Max? So you came up with a marking scheme for the math exam. So normally marking oh. scheme is for each question, right? You got method marks, unit marks, and accuracy marks. So normally for three mark question, right? Uh, probably if you get a correct answer, the final correct answer, you get one mark. Uh, then let's say if you use the correct units, you get another mark. If you use the correct method, you, use, you get the third mark. So things like that. Okay. Then, uh, okay. criteria for uh, deployment. <laughs> um, now, this, this is quite important because uh, in my previous job, I came across a Node.js developer. He can write Node.js applications, but he don't. He has never deployed before. Okay. So the time I was helping to set up a the type of little box, a uh, small little PC, right? Install mm -hmm. Ubuntu, then PHP, uh, and uh, no JS, mm -hmm. so I don't know no JS at the time. So I asked him, "Can you give me steps?" Mm -hmm. So in the end, uh, when I followed the steps that he gave, right, mm -hmm. uh, we ran a lot of problems because uh, permission is used. Okay. Uh, because uh, no JS only runs in in the privilege of the user that you installed with. Right. Oh. So uh, mm -hmm. a lot of issues. Mm -hmm. So a lot of developers decide they say, hey, "Okay, I can code an application. That's it." But now, actually, nowadays you need to know deployment also. So for one point only if you know like required infrastructure. Okay. Uh like nowadays people use cloud, right? AWS, sure, sure. things like that. How to configure a server, uh continuous integration. Mm -hmm. And you have done it. Yeah. Uh, okay. So contextual examples uh for PHP, you have probably you know how to use NGX. Level yeah. has one called Envoyer. And for Max, deployment will actually mean you know how to publish a textbook. <laughs> Now there's a difference between uh, uh, writing a textbook and publishing. Uh, publishing is a total, total, dif totally different process altogether. So if you have published a textbook, means you have deployed something in uh, the math sphere. I see. Right. Your name is published in other <laughs> right? <laughs> something like that. Right. Yeah. You're like a academic. Uh, yes, yeah, correct. So for criterion five, uh, certification full one point only if you have the latest one, uh, like. For Microsoft, uh, some the new certifications all have expired date. So like after one or three years, uh, they expire. Then it's like, Popake la, you have to get the newest one. So for PHP, uh, the official certification is the Zen Certified Engineer. The latest one is for PHP 7.1. That was released in uh, 2017, the exam. Yeah. Laravel, surprisingly, uh, I was just searching, right? Uh, actually, Laravel offers certification. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Max, in the context of Singapore, okay. where we are now, uh, Max, it means you have gotten a, a postgraduate diploma in education. That's for NIE, our uh, Teachers Training Institute. Mm, okay. So that's certification. Uh, criterion 6. You have contributed to an open source project related Okay, to the language of framework. So full one point only if you are active code contributor. So if you contribute to documentation, sorry, uh, <laughs> doesn't count because uh, we are interviewing you for a developer position. <laughs> so um, you can also get a full one point if you did a project that's used by others. So for example, uh, Aru, he did up this uh, framework called the Wrestler Framework. Yeah, so that's uh, by used use by other people okay, and yeah. by his current company. Uh, so that one, yes, you get a full point. Uh, yeah, I thought you create your own framework, <laughs> you have two points, it's not <laughs> one point. Now you only have one full one point. Okay, 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 okay. okay so, so why open source? Uh, open source, of course, one thing you can check, uh, you can check on, online. Uh. True, true. Secondly, it's, uh, usually there are strict contribution guidelines to manage that thousands, potentially thousands of contributors. Mm. So you will have learn some discipline and teamwork. Okay, if you have not contributed to an open source project, right, you may tend to actually uh, do things your own way. Uh, you may uh, push your own commits in your own way. So that if you're working in a team, right, that may cause a mess. 
So if you have open, work with an open source project before, right, that gives an ease of mind to the employer. Mm, so for PHP, the related one would be WordPress. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have contributed something to WordPress code before. Uh, Laravel, Laravel Mix is uh, kind of, it's an NPM package. Uh, I can't remember what, is that, uh, what it does, kind of, kind of bundling one. Okay. And uh, Max, uh, you probably participated in a community project. This music, Max, is actually from Passivis uh, Primary School. Hmm. So uh, they actually did a uh, project uh, to uh, incorporate music, Max. Interesting. Yeah. So Criterion 7, uh, one scale up. You have contributed to the language or the framework itself. So for one point, if you're an active contributor, same thing, uh, documentation not counted. So contextual examples, PHP, PHP internals, that means you probably, uh, this will actually involve C, uh, more of C, not so much of PHP. Yeah, yeah. Uh, PHP internals, uh, work on the Zen engine. Uh, level, you have work on the level uh, source code uh, for Max. Something that was mentioned by our Prime Minister uh, recently, uh, you came up with a new way to uh, make solving quadratic equations easy. You know that what s equals to minus b plus minus right, square root right, of b right. squared. Yeah. So uh, you contributed something to the to the arena. Hmm, uh, criterion eight. You have given talks. <laughs> so this one talks more about your your confidence also. Uh, for one point only if you have given three talks at international conferences and you can provide video recordings of the talks because you cannot just tell us, right, must have proof, right? Yeah. So this is where engineers.ig <laughs> come in. Um, so, so far, uh, the one person I think of is uh, Hui Jing, la, who runs uh, Talk CSS. Uh, she has given talks at uh, international conferences, GSConf Asia mm. uh, and uh, overseas as well. So contextual examples, probably you have spoken at PHP Conference Asia uh, for Laravel, you have spoken at Lar- uh, Laracon before, and probably you gave a TED talk uh, for Max. Mm-hmm. So uh, given talks. Uh, then you have the, the second last criterion, you okay. have taught classes, courses, or workshops. So we all know that the best way to learn is uh, to teach. Yep. So for one point only, you have taught at least three batches of students. So, um, not much of an example over here because uh, yeah, for PHP, let's say you are working with a Zen authorized training partner or let's say with uh, General Assembly teaching the language. Level, uh, let's say um, Udemy courses, probably you are YouTube instructor, that will count also. For maths, that's very simple. You are a school teacher. So, you are teaching uh, you have taught many batches of students, so that's a given. And last of all, is Criterion 10. You are an active contributor to the community for the language or the framework. So half a point if you are a meetup or conference organizer, full one point only if you are a mentor figure in the global community. So some contextual examples for PHP, for example, Rasmus Ladov, the creator of PHP, uh, Laravel, Taylor Otwell, the creator of Laravel, or for maths, you are a master teacher. So the link actually goes to the Academy of Singapore Teachers that lists the number of uh, the master teachers in Singapore. Wow. So they are specialists, uh, the top specialists uh, in the nation for a particular subject. Cool. Wow. Yeah. I didn't know okay. yeah. So uh, normally you think hey, uh, after teacher, well, there's, you can't really climb the ranks. But now they actually have a, a teaching track and they have a management track. Right. So if you don't like to be a principal, you can become a master teacher. Uh, so it's basically so, Sifu or the Sifu? Yeah, Sifu or Sifu. <laughs> like, so I think most of this uh, the PhD, I think. Right. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, nice. Interesting. Anyhow. So this this great Zion. Did, 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 did they pronounce Zion or Zion? How, how do you pronounce this? Uh, Zion. Zion. Yeah, but, but people have called me Zion. So so <laughs> yeah, <both are> <laughs> right. I, I I love what you did. Uh, basically, I think what I would do differently is that I would give a different weightage to different criterions. Ah, right. So okay. I I kind of don't agree that perhaps all the criterions are equal in weightage. <clears> right. <throat> perhaps some criterions are more heavier than the others. Right. So perhaps things like uh, actively contributing to the community, uh, perhaps things like um, 
uh, writing a framework from scratch. You know, you r- maybe you wrote your own PHP framework. You know, mm. what we know, mm. right? I, I guess those would give you a, a better weightage and perhaps you know uh, uh, rank you or rate yourself higher than than the others. But yeah, that, that's what I would d- do differently also. Mm. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so. Did you give this criteria to the uh, applicant? Oh no, this was after it. After <laughs> it? Uh, okay. after I, after I guess it. he didn't get the job. Uh, no, I'm not sure yet. Because actually, we are looking for, we are also looking for a junior developer. I see. Yeah, okay, cool. So, yeah. Yeah. So I, I really like I really like this uh, structure, right? I mean, yeah. it's like first you have actually written some uh, writ- written a full application, like uh, uh, not just. Um, you know, so it's about writing the, writing the whole website. Knows about the st- best practices and mm. standards. Knows about TDD, about how to write tests. Uh, not just written code, but deployed code. Uh, we have taken, you have, you have, you have gone down the route of mastery to be like to, to adopt like not just know about the practices, but also make sure that there's an external body mm-hmm. uh, making sure that you actually know what you say you know. Mm-hmm. So things like certification is one thing. Contributed open source, I think is something is uh, quite, quite underrated in, in yeah. a lot of communities yeah. in, Asia. Uh, in Asia. So contributed and contributed to the language and framework itself, uh, given talks, uh, I think is the best way to kind of create. I think probably this is the easiest. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> well, other than number one, uh, other than number one, uh, you know, like you know, deploys, uh, write something, uh, but um, giving talks probably one of the easiest, uh, at mm. least in Singapore. Uh, mm. uh, teach a class, well, that's a, that's that kind of like is a function of you being having given talks before, right? Once you've given talks, people believe you, believe, believe you a little bit, and then they let you uh, teach a class and stuff. In fact, I'd argue if you get if you have certification that qualifies you for teaching a class, it's yes, also true. True, right? also true. Yeah. Actually, I would. It's a bit of a. <laughs> okay. no, it's, it's a bit of a. Yeah, because you can be a very good practitioner. Yeah. Uh, yeah. but doesn't mean you know how to teach someone yeah, that's to, true. To, that's to, true. to do yeah, the thing, true. right? Like you can, yeah. you're like really good at implementing yeah. all the very high level stuff. Yeah. But then when you ask you to mentor somebody, you're like, I don't know how to yeah. start. Right? Yeah. So we, we see those are those PGDEs that have the certification but can't teach for that. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. Yeah, same, right? same thing applies, <laughs> right? So yeah, so doesn't mean you can, you have certificate, it means you can teach. but. Yeah, it's, it's uh, halfway there. <laughs> At least people trust you a bit more. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And of course, being actually com- contributed to the community. La. But what about this is too is like, you know. Well, like, I can't find it. Yeah, it's like, it's like, it's <laughs> like, you know, this guy is like BDFL level, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Benevolent dictator for life yeah. kind of a person. <laughs> I don't know, man. I think these two are quite qualified with that. I actually tried to quantify this criterion 10. Like, where are you in the rank of contributors? Mm. Oh, are you in the top 10 or are you 25% <laughs> no. out? That kind of thing, right? Sure, sure, yeah. sure. So if you're somewhere around the top 25% out, I, I would say more marks to you. Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. somewhere in the 50 or 75 percent perhaps less points for you. you know? Right. Yeah. But I think there's a little bit of a difference there, right? In the sense that, at least in the PHP side of the pond, right? Mm-hmm. Um, the, you, you, even though you're really like say you're your core contributor to PHP yeah. and you're like doing all the very very low level things in PHP chances are you don't actually write much PHP mm-hmm. you write True. more like C, C yeah. and all yeah. that stuff right and then uh, and what matters is, you, is your opinion as in your your ideas about the language uh, ideas about how to f- how uh, we should use the language the, those opinions are really what matters to you but then again the people who care about those opinions are probably I don't know whether they actually care about what uh, they just more like uh, I'm a I'm a I'm a taker, so I, yeah. I just use whatever the framework gives, right? Yeah. They don't really go into deep arguments about yeah. you know uh, namespaces <laughs> okay. and why why is that forward slash and, and <laughs> not something else? Oh, yes. You know, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's a different question, different thing altogether. But still, um, yeah. But in, what I'm trying to get at is that even though you might be here, like active contributor or really. There, but then again, in the PHP side of the side of the pond, is like you write C for the low level stuff, right? And then you, you, you don't necessarily do a lot. And then, or rather, your opinions, I would say, you ask Rasmus, Rasmus about his opinions about you know, uh, what how, what do you think is the ideal MVC framework? He would mm. he would probably say, I'll just, I'll just hand roll everything. Yeah. PHP <laughs> is good enough. Well, yes. I need a framework, right? Yes. But you ask uh, Taylor, he will probably tell you, oh yeah, Laravel is probably the best, you know. Yeah. He's very opinionated about how we should design a framework and and the MVC part of it and then the, the, the ORM part of it yeah. and like 
different people have different opinions lah. So yeah, no, it's a bit, a bit of a mixed bag. But I, but these are good, good guidelines to have lah. And I think some of the concepts here are quite trans- transferable to other languages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. So this would be cool. I like this. But what do you think about you know when you, when you apply for the job interviews, right? Um, would you advise uh, engineers or potential uh, engineers to get themselves certified? Um, certification is like uh, mm-hmm. getting uh, your first uh, degree. Mm-hmm. Uh, it get you probably get you the interview. Mm-hmm. Uh, but whether you can survive through the job is another matter. Mm-hmm. And uh, unfortunately, for certification, some people actually wrote learn or some people may uh, get the question somewhere. So uh, it may not be a hundred percent foolproof as well. Mm. But um, so for myself, I, I do have a certification. Uh, <coughs> I for them. Nice. Um, wow. <laughs> so so to me, it's more of a who is counting. <laughs> <laughs> So, so to me, it's more so is to challenge myself to just check whether I know the fund, uh, the fundamentals. Yeah. So when I see someone who is certified, right? So the first thought would be okay. At least he took the trouble to go and take the exam. Mm-hmm. So actually, he actually bothers about uh, uh his uh his standing or his uh, knowledge of uh the certification. Yeah. How he uh gets it? Okay, that that that's another matter. Mm-hmm. So uh, actually that shows that okay. His uh, his passion to actually upgrade himself. Yeah, I think with interviewing somebody, like, like for example, when you interview someone, you want to f- get as high a signal to noise ratio. Yeah. So in a sense, you want to find indicators that tells me about this person's co- characteristic. Is he a good developer? Is he da da da? So having a certification and everything, it's a signal. I don't know whether it's a high signal, high fidelity signal or low fidelity signal. Yeah. It's a it's a signal. It tell me that you are passionate enough about the language to learn. Competent enough. Competent yeah. and also competent yeah. enough, right? Yeah. To know at least the fundamentals. Yeah. So so then it's about as an individual I will okay, there's a there's a there's one signal. He, he seems competent. So let's try and verify that. Yeah. Right? So as a interviewer we'll look at the certification will be uh Tells me he's like the kind of like tells me this is this is my baseline expectation of this fella. Yeah. Right. And does he actually match up? And okay. use like coding assignments, uh, live coding, or even mm. uh, you know uh, whiteboarding to kind of like figure out whether he actually knows what he says he knows mm. Yeah. Mm. Actually, I, uh, like for my previous job, uh, one of the reasons why I got a job or interview in the first place was uh, my, my name kind of like certifications I have. If you right. go Zaino, you can see them. Uh, so my boss will say, oh, first time I see people got so many certifications. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that got me through the door. La. That, got through, that, that got me through the door. Uh, on the right hand side. Yeah. Okay. Whoa, is this 1995, bro? <laughs> Dude, <laughs> yes. 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 <laughs> okay, there we go. Okay, so yeah, we have the so you have the certifications. All that TTB is bothering me though. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit, a little bit. Yeah. So anyway, uh, so you have all the all the stuff here. Ooh, okay, nice. I can zoom. I can zoom. Yes, I can. Ooh. I can zoom. Ooh. Anyway, yeah. So these are the certifications and TTB just overlap. Okay, never mind. <laughs> cool. Uh, yeah. So so having certification does get you through the door. But the question yeah. about uh, whether you can actually you actually can do the job is uh, another question la. So that's something that a lot of interviewers probably need to figure out uh, as they do the interview la. Cool. All right. Uh, let's let's be distracting. Let's get out of the way. <laughs> uh, so let's get back to our questions or rather the third item. So um, how do you think? Also, let's conclude about the rating. So do you think it's a good thing having this kind of rating thing? Yeah, I I think it's a slightly objective yep. way. Yep. Uh, to determine whether you're good enough, right? And more honest way also. Mm, sure. Uh, I, I I love it. You know, you 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 humble yourself in front of the interview. I'm five or ten. Man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Although I wouldn't dare. I wouldn't dare. Yeah. more than that. You, you would be yeah. an interesting. Yeah, yeah, I think this is a very but, interesting. Um, but a bunch of indicators yeah. you can look at. So but I think. I mean, um, every applicant will always try to sell themselves, right? Yeah. yeah. Of course, everybody's gonna say nine or ten. They would go the perfect ten, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> right. But again, 
I, I, I guess with the criterions, you know, it, it's yeah. it's a whole lot more objective. It's more objective, yeah. And it right. actually covers more aspects. So, uh, yeah. you are right in that uh, some criterion should get more British. Uh, but at the time I was writing this, it was to make it as uh, simple as possible. Yeah. Yeah. So that I can quickly give a rating to someone. Mm -hmm. yeah. I see. So, uh, so it's like for each criteria only zero, half a point, uh, one point. Mm. There's no like point two, point three. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's just too much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, too much details. Okay, but yeah, okay, cool. cool. Thanks, man. Thanks, Ian. So we'll share the link on the show notes. You can, can check, check it out later. Okay, last last item for the day: uh, the future of PHP in Asia. So are, co are companies still using PHP? What are the new developments in Asia oh. and trends? So Hazru was sharing with us a little bit about some of the new trends happening up north in Malaysia as well as in Indonesia. Mm -hmm. Would you like to share us with, tell, uh, share with the audience again? Right. So um, uh, a company still using PHP? Question mark. Is it in Singapore? Is it in Asia? Uh, and, and typically people look to Singapore, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, for for the trends and all this. Uh, and and what we're seeing today is that uh, companies tend to be moving away from PHP. Mm. Right, yeah. do, do you guys agree with that? You know. Yeah. 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 And yeah. but uh, is it still relevant across the pond, across uh, the streets? Right. Uh, what I'm seeing is that uh, in countries like Malaysia, for example, Laravel uh, is very very popular. Mm -hmm. Very very popular. In fact, uh, just last month there was a um, uh, talks uh, to build a site in Laravel in Cyberjaya, right? And they do this Ooh. quite frequently. Right. Um, and in fact, one of one of the uh, most promising startups in in Malaysia right now, Run Cloud, which oh, yeah, Run Cloud, yeah, okay. yeah, 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 which yeah. is uh, um, uh, sponsored some of the PHP talks or PHP meetups. Yeah. I remember, right? Yeah. Um, they started out as a PHP pass, right? Mm. And then moving on to other things. But uh, when I asked the the founders and the and the uh, product owners and they asked me is this speech be still relevant in Singapore today? I said, well, not really. Uh, but then they kept saying, you know, in Malaysia it's very very relevant today. Still, so many Laravel uh, projects out there, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, maybe because uh, over there there's a lot more inclination towards open source. Yeah. Right. Um, and in Indonesia, um, there is still a lot of WordPress developers, WordPress teams. A lot of WordPress themes uh, come up from Indonesia, for example. WordPress plugins come up from Indonesia. Um, but because it's such a big country, with such a big population, so many engineers, they're doing a lot of crazy things today. Uh, today, I see a lot more Ruby on Rails engineers. I see a lot more people doing Node.js. Oh, Node.js. Yeah. Uh, I see some people even uh, going towards Golang. Right, so there's there's a far more I would say variety in in Indonesia, um, as opposed to Malaysia. Malaysia mostly still heavy uh, prominence for PHP, uh, and of course all the other you know enterprise tech like Java and Microsoft, uh, ASP, mm -hmm, that kind mm -hmm. of thing. But the the open source stuff still mostly PHP. Yeah, in fact, if I remember correctly, one of the top ten contributors to the Laravel framework is Malaysian. Oh, okay. Yes, so you, you've got, um, I would say, a following mostly because they're, they are master, what you call master contributors, right? And, and, and they give talks so or they, they share, you know, so mm -hmm. people listen, people still contribute actively, right? Um, so yeah, um, th those are some of my uh, uh, knowledge about what's going on in the region. Right? Sure. Yeah, so uh, what, what do you think? Is there still a future for PHP in Asia? Mm, I know that it's quite big in uh, Japan also. Uh, in fact, uh, the tickets to the PHP conferences are free. <laughs> there, there's so many sponsors. Oh. Uh, WordCamp. Uh, WordCamp is also uh, quite uh, popular over there. Um, uh, the WordPress community is, there is quite strong. Mm. So, um, my per uh, personally, I still favor PHP because actually uh, it covers all my uh, uh, use cases mm. so if i want to do a uh, simple scripting uh i can do it in php if i want uh, cms uh that's wordpress if i want to do a uh, framework there's many options out there uh yeah. zen framework or uh, level framework yeah um and um, deployment is actually uh, quite simple last night just you get the uh, host let's say from godaddy and then you just ftp up yeah uh then uh setting up 
from scratch on the let's say uh, Ubuntu service also quite easy. Apache Engine as all these things are already been uh, cast in stone, used for many years already. The mm-hmm. process is actually quite uh, uh, foolproof. Mm-hmm. Whereas uh, like what I shared just now about uh, my Node.js developer, so Node.js uh, deployment. So normally you need to probably do more steps. Uh, I suppose uh, uh, for let's say Ruby on Rails, Ruby. Ruby is a nice language, yeah. but problem is, uh, I think, except for Ruby on Rails, there's actually no other choices out there. Right? Yeah, yeah, probably not a lot of uh, Ruby-based web frameworks out there. I yeah. think it's still popular as Ruby on Rails. Yeah. I mean, PHP, there's, there's that variety, that the, the choice can go Laravel, can go E framework, mm-hmm. right? Um, and if you want to qualify WordPress as a framework, <laughs> then that's one, that's the way to go. Also can. Drupal, also can. Yeah, Drupal. Uh, yeah. 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 I mean, so, there are more choices of right, really mature and established and proven <laughs> yes. uh, frameworks yeah. out there. CMSs, yeah. uh, frameworks. Mm-hmm. It's like in the Ruby world, like, I like know it's like there's not much in terms of like CMS, mm-hmm. but because I think the people think that oh I can just build it in Rails, but why why we need like a CMS? Right? Yeah. build your own CMS. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think when we talk about CMS, the the trend today is going uh, going headless, right? Headless, yeah, yeah, headless or static generators. I didn't catch that. Oh, could you try again? <laughs> sorry, sorry. Oops. <laughs> yeah. So headless, right? Yeah. So basically, like yeah. uh, just uh, for example, WordPress CMS serving as a REST API. Yeah. And then you have a single page app, uh, yeah. or, or running just web technologies like React or yeah. Vue.js or whatever, consuming an API. Uh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, correct, correct, correct. I I think uh, if I have to give an answer to this question, there is still a future. Is it bleak? I don't think it's bleak. Mm-hmm. I, I think it's not strong either. Uh, it's kind of there, but um, I, I would actually uh, take a signal from WordPress, mm. from Automatic, because they're, they're literally the biggest uh, contributors of PHP today. They, they run, WordPress runs like three quarters of uh, websites in the world, right? Yeah. right. It's, it, it's, it's so dominant um, that uh, what automatic sales would tend to direct how the market behaves all right and um, for me I think frankly the signal's not quite there we don't know what WordPress wants to do with with WordPress and how it's going to evolve uh, and how that would translate to how what what the products people are going to build right today we have things like um, uh, uh, what you call a, a, a team designer like Elementor, mm. right? Template designer mm-hmm. Elementor, mm-hmm. right? And, and WordPress trying to kind of build that. Yeah, with Gutenberg. Their, yeah, with Gutenberg, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. But is is that the way to go for WordPress? You know, it's not for me. It's not a clear signal, right? Uh, I I would actually say, why don't you just go headless? Everything's supposed to be API based today, mm. right? And why yes. can't why can't we go to the basic rules of WordPress? Keep it simple and let yeah. other people do those fancy crazy things right so Is we can right? yeah can try to keep that simple let the market decide how to use wordpress instead of trying to build more features into wordpress like for me personally i, I think gutenberg is a silly project for them to undertake a well, lot a lot of people issues. yeah a lot of people are doing better things out there right um, um the state of woocommerce for example it's is getting ripped apart by Shopify, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then I, I think all my talks tend to pitch on Wo- WooCommerce, right? <laughs> right? And hey, come on, man. so. Um, yeah. uh, but the reality is that there's a lot of WordPress projects today, especially in, you know, uh, uh, some parts of the world. I mean, Europe still WordPress is is quite uh, dominant, mm. right? Um, Americas, a lot of WordPress projects, right? But because it's now so commoditized, you won't get as much money as perhaps 10 years ago. This is quite different for PHP developer today, and that's why a lot of PHP developers probably upskilling themselves to try other things like Go, for example, mm-hmm. or Node.js, mm-hmm. for example, right? There's just not, the money's not there anymore. And I guess money talks, people will move where the money is, True. right? Like what you observe about Indonesia, they're also moving away from PHP to like Ruby, Node.js, yeah. Golang. Yeah. I think a lot of the startups there in Indonesia also use a lot of 
I mean, the more, the more sexier startups there, like uh, Gojek, for yeah. example, uses a lot of yeah, Golang yeah, in, in the Go. back end. Mm. Right? So, yeah. But Grab uses WordPress on their corporate sites and they're tr- trying <laughs> to do funny <laughs> things on, really? on their corporate website. Oh, yeah. okay, yeah. okay. Interesting. Yeah. So, if a company like Grab still uses WordPress, therefore PHP is still somewhat relevant? Yeah. I guess. Yeah, just, I guess, not on the app kind of thing, but how the website interfaces with things like the HRMS or something like that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, um, uh, like the past uh, PHP conferences I attended, right? Mm. So usually we will get uh, like those speakers from US or from Europe. Mm. So you find that uh, they normally will talk about some deep uh, topics yeah. or deep in. Uh, sometimes you watch their Twitter, then you find that... Um, the level of PHP that they are handling is actually quite different, and it seems that like it's quite com- uh, you can get that comfortable salary, comfortable job over there, mm. and they have all the time to actually do all the research and uh, deep dive. Yeah. Whereas over here, like uh, we are always at fighting fire. It's like um, <laughs> yeah. So it's quite a <clears throat> interesting comparison. Let's say the, the Western world and uh, on this side of the of the world. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. If you want good. PHP jobs probably you have to go to Japan uh, <laughs> in this yeah. side of the world yeah, right yeah, yeah. Know how to speak Japanese first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah man so so what do you think about the future is it <laughs> <laughs> okay Zion what do you think mm. up down or somewhere in between actually it really depends on the developers and companies I will tend to favor the tried and tested Mm. Um. Yeah, like even uh, Node.js uh st- st- still has its issues uh, uh s- s- sometime back. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, npm is uh, just just gone private. Is it they all got sold or something? Can't remember. Yeah. Npm. Uh, yeah, it's been privatized. For, yeah. I mean, he has been. He has a co- corporate entity behind it, but Yeah. So, so this person. company trying to claim copyright over npm or something like that. Something. Wow. Yeah. yeah. A lot of dramas in yeah, there. Yeah. A lot of. <laughs> Uh, so it's try and tested, uh, yeah. but people developers always had to go for the new shiny shiny things. Right. But yeah. you know, the thing about any technology adoption, right? As in, you know, I want to go with PHP or Ruby or whatever. <laughs> it's always about availability of uh, people to hire, mm-hmm. right? So I think in this part of the world, I think mm-hmm. a lot of it is about oh, I. Yeah, I, I don't mind going into this particular stack, but then again, I need to figure out how to hire Rubyists, for example. I mean, there was this uh, guy I spoke to from, from Malaysia many years ago. He was like, oh yeah, they wanted to try to go to Ruby on Rails, but they couldn't hire enough Rubyists. Oh, mm-hmm. So yeah. in the end, they just ditched that and went with Laravel instead because yeah. it was much easier to find Laravel and PHP developers who can convert to Laravel developers, mm-hmm. right? Much, much easily. Much but I, I, I'd have to say it's because that the market in Malaysia is uh, configured like that, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. Um, what they teach university, for example, probably there's a lot more PHP. You don't sure. really talk about the rubies and the more oh, sexier stuff. They actually teach PHP in the... They actually st- yeah, they actually teach PHP that's in nice, university. That's nice. Wow. Right? Unlike, you know, Singapore. Right. <laughs> in Singapore, they're teaching more Python in school now. Yeah. They used, oh, yeah. They used to teach... Uh, other than Java, yeah. they they used to teach a bit of PHP in uh, mm. Republic Poly, but they mm-hmm. dropped that years ago. Yeah. So yeah. so now this is uh, um, yeah, Python because I think that they think Pythonistas will make <laughs> very good data scientists. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> or actually data engineers. But anyway, yeah. yeah. So it's also what the school teach. Uh, like yeah. uh, I think nowadays a lot of boot camps. Uh, they probably also focus on Node.js. I think. Yeah, I think it's Node.js and Python nowadays. Yes. Yeah, Python. Yeah. Like General yeah. Assembly yeah. and uh, what's the other one? Code. Uh, there's another. Uh, there's another one which is out there as well. Yeah, they they, they do they cover Python yeah. or JavaScript. Yeah. And you know. So, which means, as a in terms of supply, right? Mm-hmm. Going forward, the supply chain coming in, or the next future hires, potential hires, all will probably be doing uh, JavaScript or Python. Yeah. So, what does it mean for 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 companies who are working or dealing with like uh, 
a lot of uh, like a legacy PHP application or a legacy yeah. Ruby application, right? So it's a. I, I, I think it's actually good for old heads like us. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so it's like our uh, job. <laughs> we still we know can, how WordPress works. We can command <laughs> a higher. <service>. Yeah. <laughs> I can get that done in about yeah, 10 yeah, minutes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. True, true. Yeah, yeah so. Ah uh, yeah, one thing I forgot to mention like PHP uh, if I want to do object oriented, it covers it covers it quite well. Yeah. Mm. Uh, whereas for uh, uh, JavaScript, uh, JavaScript itself uh, yeah, the old piece uh, isn't 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 quite there. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So so in the recent uh, tech ladies, the tech ladies bootcamp huh. we did uh, so this time round we were doing some PHP uh, JavaScript. So previously they were doing Ruby on Rails, and it's time going to JavaScript, right? So I was like looking at the code and everything, right? It's like wow, you're like you're dealing with sh with stuff that we've solved years ago mm, in yes. either either in other frameworks like you know uh, Ruby on Rails and PHP. All mm. these we have solved a lot of these things. Yeah. Like why are you even dealing with event loops, right? I mean like callbacks, huh? Mm -hmm. What are callbacks? I mean we we got we got shit done in in the same you know right thing we don't need to deal with or oh, deal with like oh callbacks or like uh promises or dealing with we don't need to deal yeah. with that why do we have to look i i don't know i i don't know it seems like if it, it felt like regression uh. right. the simple things like connecting to databases and shit like oh, it takes oh, a whole so much so much harder like you will forget to do like for example if you're using um I can't remember which framework I was using, but you had some ORM, right, in, mm -hmm. in, in, in JavaScript, you forget to deal with the, the async await, you're, you're, you're doomed. Is it React or something? No, 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 React. It's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a post, we're using Postgres. Right. That's cool. Uh, oh, you're using a Java, Node.js uh, library to connect to the, to the, to uh -huh. the Node post, Postgres database, right? So uh -huh. it's like, you forget to connect to it or you forget to deal with the a specific callback or it crashes somewhere. Your Node.js yes, server just keep waiting. Oh God! And you have no <laughs> response until like half a minute later. Like what the fuck? Like, I don't know. Man. It's like you know, mm, it's a, that's interesting. Maybe mm. because we're doing local development in development mode, maybe it crashes or timeout is a bit longer or yeah. whatever. So, but I don't know. But it's just it, it feels like a different beast, lah. Do you think that when people try to you know adopt or or, or test this um. I, I call this the um, uh, the blinking blinking uh, diamond. Or, you know, <laughs> it's it's a nice thing to catch, right? Right, right. Uh, do you think that because you're tr trying to do that, it actually goes against the agile principles, right? It's not as agile. Uh, to be honest, like going down any technology adoption yeah. is a long term play, right? So mm -hmm. it's like, how do you deal with people who? I think some some enterprises or companies have evolved to kind of adapt to this. Yep. They take on instead of writing building a one giant monolith, they went with microservices. Mm -hmm. So microservices gives you the flexibility to oh, I want I want to build this part in JavaScript, mm -hmm. no JS. I want to build this part in PHP. I want to build this part in Ruby. And blah, blah, blah. Oh, wow. so it's like, but but then it creates a, a yeah, third problem, monster. right? Which is <laughs> how do you deal with all these different complexities? Yeah. How to deal with like I went to a, for a talk before about how they deal how they deal with microservices complexities, which is first of all have a standard uh, build process. Mm -hmm. So they like in a uh, company I used to work at, we basically introduce make files. <laughs> so oh. every so every project, either whether you're like a, a PHP or, or JavaScript or Ruby or Node.js, whatever, you have a make file, and the make file is always standard. Make something or make build or whatever. So you just once you do that, it triggers what it needs to do, right? right. So it's a step like they have. So you have to enforce right. another layer on top of what you already know, like right. other than on top of learning. So the the, the what they're trying to deal with was like people who needs to orchestrate or play like with or rather spin up three four microservices just to test one function in his in his microservice, right? So how do you deal with that kind of complexity, <laughs> right? So instead of having the person. Oh, I'm writing my my stuff in PHP, but then I also need to know how to how to do npm install and <laughs> uh, and and gem install and bundle right. or whatever. In all these other languages, do I want to learn all that? No, no. I don't. Right. Mm, so yeah. basically, I think what I try to introduce is have a make file. Everyone just run make, and you're done. And you got it running. And then you yourself you deal with your own complexity. Right. So you have a deal. You have to introduce these conventions and enforce these conventions to just make these things work properly. Right. So it's is a Trade off, 
I would right. say it's a trade off. Right. Uh, like, yeah. So having microservices is it sounds nice on paper, mm. but when you have coupled microservices like different microservices that actually are so interconnected that you you can't deploy one without deploying the other, for example, mm -hmm. then what difference is this from a monolith, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. From from a giant monolith, from like one monolith, you have s mo one monolith in small parts, <laughs> which is even hard to deal with, right? So. I don't know. Yeah. It's, you're, you're trading off one complexity to, with another complexity. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't know. It's just not that nice. It yeah. isn't, I think. Mm. But actually, I'm more yeah. worried about, not so much about PHP, but more so of the the matter of the our future generation of developers. Mm. Yeah. Uh, like, for example, JavaScript, if you don't write anything that looks like OOP, right, you actually think need quite a lot of discipline and uh, top process whereas for let's say uh, PHP or even Java uh, it's already built into the language already yeah, yeah you, you, you yeah you'll be warned or something if you do something funny whereas uh, yeah you you'll be quite hard to do in uh, JavaScript you need a lot of discipline yeah. so I'm not quite sure it's like uh, uh, but is discipline this discipline being taught in schools huh? yeah I don't think so <laughs> you, don't, you don't teach things that Design patterns, do they? No, right? they don't. They don't. In, in polytechnic, still, they don't really teach design patterns. They just uh, tell you how to get shit done. Yeah. They they tell you the how, but they don't tell you the why. Yeah. Right. <coughs> I I think that's I'm I'm not sure, but I think that's quite different in in university level. No, they don't. <laughs> ah. Okay. Uh, uh, did uh, like this uh like design patterns uh actually only like heard of uh, come across it when uh, mm. I came to the work, working world oh. you know that, like PSR uh, all these uh, uh, standards right. uh, I started coding when I was in uh, set 2 but back then it's like I already had probably like OCD la, so I let it indent my code nicely so when <laughs> I wrote this okay okay it fell, fell nicely with me right, uh, but all these things were actually yeah it's learned outside school Mm. Okay, interesting. I when when I did my uh, university course, I was uh, I was taught by this uh, uh, SIM lecturer. It was the first time somebody, and it was a local. First time somebody actually was able to um, tell me why you use certain design patterns in Java. Ooh. And for the first time, I was like, oh, now oh. that makes sense to me. I see. All right, and and I thought, well, he teaches at SIM. Okay. He also teaches at uh, uh, private unis in Singapore. Like I was, I, I was see. doing the University of Adelaide Computer Science, but he was really good. When I compared that versus what I got at Poly, right? We we had we had a foreign uh, lecturer. No, no offense, but I think by the foreign local uh, at Poly level, they they just telling you the the how is done. They don't really tell you why it's done this way, what you mm. should look out for. They just tell you, okay, this goes to here. Uh, oh, okay, you know. But um, I. I, I guess you're right. I'm I'm actually still concerned. They know, do they know why they're doing this? And even in uh, when you run companies or you run a little startup or whatever, you always have to question your why. Like why do you do this? Is, does that even make sense to you? Can you get see. from A to B fast? Right? And and talk and listen to all of you guys talking about the complexities of how things are done today. I'm just wondering, is does is that even helpful to your organization? Right, so this, this seems like a topic for another day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's this whole concept about the back endification of the front end, which is even another whole oh, shitload wow. of things. No, so you, so you don't let, let's 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 <laughs> leave, wait, let's leave that for the next podcast, right? right? So, I think a lot of things can cover. So, yeah, so um, thank, thanks a lot for you two guys. It was really the, the very interesting discussion. Thanks for today. Yeah. So, Hazru, Zion, myself, and Michael. Hazru, mm -hmm. why don't you do a quick plug? Uh, what you're okay. doing, what you're working on now. Uh, I'm um, tech at Janu. Janu Asia is a log tech company. Mm -hmm. right? uh, we are trying to build a, um, a, a network of uh, supply chain um, with uh, over... Sorry, let me just repeat that again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so a log tech company, right? Uh, that helps you... Uh, deliver your stuff from A to B but instead of trying to build something like DHL we're trying to build a DHL that's democratized mm -hmm. so we partner with logistics companies across the supply chain and they use our platform and our common uh, stack Okay. so uh, we help you get your parcel from A to B at a fraction of the price that the express guys do 
Wow. Right. Ooh. So that's what that's what I do. I'm uh, I'm tech, but I do a lot more product work. I see. Right? I crystallize the problem for the mm. engineers, and then I see. They figure out the how. And you yeah. guys, are you guys hiring? <laughs> Um, I have to ask. I think okay. we. I think we are. Yes, we are. <laughs> okay. I'm not so sure about the engineering end of things, though. Sure, yeah. sure. Yeah. Mm, thanks. Okay. Sam, you a quick plug? Uh, I currently lead engineer at this uh, company called iVideo Smart. Uh, so we actually kind of monetize ads. Uh, like uh, one main thing that working on is uh writing this uh video player HDMI video player from scratch mm. so uh, for example let's say a South Korean uh, company uh, pro- uh, produces some videos mm. so some uh, w- website in uh, Malaysia wants to show showcase those videos on their website so we uh, have the broker there then uh, we tell the Malaysia website okay you put our video player on it mm-hmm. to play uh, you will capture analytics everything and uh, when the advertisement show everyone gets a cut so that's the kind of main business model so uh, from what I heard, um, in, I think in Indonesia, so after YouTube and Facebook, we are supposed to be the third largest uh, independent, uh, uh, required ad monetization, just yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Cool. And are you guys hiring? Uh, hmm, good question. Uh, no. <laughs> guys, you got to be prepared for these kind of things. <laughs> uh, anyway. Yeah, hiring, they are not locally at the moment I see okay. no worries no worries so yeah that's all we have for our second episode of, of uh, uh, Singapore PHP podcast so hope you guys can come back again and uh, we'll, and also contribute ideas that's very helpful please, so ideas please. that will th- help us build a more interesting podcast for you guys right so that's all we have and see ya see ya see ya Bye. Bye.